Welcome to 100% Epic, I'm Chris. Today we're gonna to be talking about FPV lenses, probably one of the easiest things you can do to swap out on your FPV system, maximize its performance. Also, probably one of the most misunderstood parts of the FPV system. Remember, your goggles have different field of views, uh, you have different size sensors. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Do you want IR, you want IR blocking, or are you flying at night? We're gonna go over all of this, and I've also set up three standardized tests that we're gonna be able to see the difference between these lenses, and we'll go outside and uh, check that out as well. So stay tuned if you want to know more about your FPV lenses. Let's go ahead and start at the core of your FPV system, which is your FPV camera and its sensor. Most of the standardized uh, FPV cameras in this size, such as the 1177, use what's called a one-third sensor. But remember, these M12 lenses that we're utilizing came from the security camera business, which meant there was a wide range of sensors available, one to fifth all the way down to a quarter and, and everything in between. So if you order in the wrong lens for a one-third camera, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to get the netting around the outside of your sensor or your image, or you're going to have a crop factor, meaning that the image, uh, the light coming in was actually bigger than your sensor, so you're going to have a crop factor. So if you were ordered in, say, a 3.1 millimeter lens for a one two fifth versus a one-third, the problem is, is it's actually going to be closer to a 2.8 because of that crop factor and your f-stop goes up, which actually could be beneficial. You could actually create a hybrid lens where you get a 2.8 with a higher F. Since we're flying out in the sun, it's nice and bright. That could actually uh, be beneficial because you'd have a little bit better uh, focal range or focal length, just like on an SLR. The higher your F-stop, better, uh, more things are in focus. I don't know if that really uh, adapts to small FPV cameras and lenses like that, but we're certainly going to try it out. So definitely remember, most FPV cameras are a one-third, so when you're shopping for lenses, if there's not data on uh, the distributor that you're buying your lens from, buy it from a different distributor. Also, most quality lenses will have it etched right onto the side, like this one is a one two seventh, which is fine and applicable. As long as it's larger than the sensor that you're utilizing, you can use it. Just remember there's gonna be a crop factor in there, so you need to just take that into account. All right, the next thing we're talking about is IR lenses. IR stands for infrared, and most FPV camera sensors can resolve IR light, meaning they can see IR light. So why do you want an IR lens versus an IR blocking lens? So if you fly late at night where it's dusk or you fly inside parking garages where it's lower dim lights or even in the pitch of night, uh, FPV cameras can use that IR light and it kind of switches to almost like a black and white mode, but you almost see like a night vision camera. A lot of these FPV cameras can see better at night than the human eye can. So you want an IR passing lens. Now on the flip side, if you fly mainly in the day and you want very vivid, rich colors, you want an IR blocking lens but it's gonna suck at night because it's gonna block the IR light, so it's gonna be very dark at night. So that's just it. If your flying is mainly during the day and you want very rich, solid colors in your view screen without bumping up the, uh, the contrast and the color in your monitor, use an IR filter lens, but you're not gonna be having very good performance at night. If you mainly are doing racing, you're in parking garages, you're flying late at night, trying to get those last batteries in, you want an IR passing lens. Now, an easy way to determine this is most, like I said, most of the quality lenses have laser on them. It'll say IR on it. That does not mean it's an IR blocked lens. It means it's an IR passing lens. It means it focuses the AR light and uh, lets the AR light through it. So you want a lens that says IR on it. Remember, these are security cam lenses, so they were designed to work at night. So IR means good for night. Now, on the flip side, if you want one that's IR blocking for those rich colors, Look on the back side and you're going to see a little piece of glass that's glued onto the back of the lens. That's the IR filter. You can always remove that if you buy an IR lens uh, if you're very careful, but uh, that one's great for rich colors. So it's up to you on which one you want. Make sure also your sensor is IR sensitive and some of the sensors actually have an IR filter on the sensor itself. So it might be a mute point, but it's something to look into and consider, especially if you're trying to fly at night and you want a very good performing camera at night go for an IR sensitive uh, sensor as well as an IR passing lens. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is megapixel lenses. Megapixel lenses, like I mentioned on the higher quality lenses, they'll either be lasered engraved or in the notes. Two megapixel, three megapixel, 3.5 or five megapixel lenses. Obviously the higher the megapixel, the better quality the lens is. Remember a lot of these cameras are fairly low resolution, so they didn't need a whole lot of elements in these lenses. Uh, they didn't really care about distortion, et cetera, et cetera. So the higher the megapixel lens is, the better quality the lens is and it's gonna resolve. Especially if you've got a high TVL line camera, like a thousand TVL uh, line camera, you want to make sure you got a megapixel lens. 
bare minimum I'd recommend is a two megapixel lens. Uh, and then, like I said, they go all the way up to five megapixels. So find the best one you can get. If it's not noted, search around and try and find a lens that has megapixel ratings. All right, guys, now we're to the nitty gritty of FPV lenses. We're gonna be talking about millimeters or focal length of the lens itself. This is a big one because it equates to the field of view. And unlike the other questions where we're just talking about IR, non-IR, matching the sensor to the lens itself, as well as the quality of the lens, those are just yes or no easy answers. This one is very subjective to you individually, as well as your equipment that they're using. A couple factors that we need to take a look at. First is your equipment and the type of flying that you're doing. By equipment, I mean your goggles. Now, if you're flying like a visor style goggle that uses a monitor that's fairly large field of view, you might want a narrower field of view of your uh, lens so it's a more natural screen. Some goggles also have a six by nine ratio where it stretches the screen instead of a four by three. And so if you're using a wide lens like a 2.3 or a 2.5, it could have a lot of distortion because it's already stretched to begin with. So you need to make that preference for yourself depending on the equipment that you have. Next is your flying style. Are you flying an aircraft that's flying fast, high, and you want a, a more natural uh, optical you know, feel, or you're shooting through gates where you're needing to have a wide field of view. You know, it's up to you. Also, do you have a head tracker or non-head tracker? If you're using a head tracker, you'd want an arrow field of view because you can pan and tilt, have a less distorted uh, picture. Most FPV, bleh, mo, sorry about that. Most FPV pilots fly between a 2.3 to a 3.6 millimeter lens. Let's first talk about the human eye as far as field of view. And, and there was a lot of misinformation or misunderstanding from my standpoint on this because back in the days when I was in school, you know, using uh, digital SLRs, they always told me a 50 millimeter was equal to the human eye. And from what I can understand, that means one human eye. Because when you put two of them together, everything that I found on the net nowadays says it's about 112 millimeters because you have two eyes and they overlap slightly and et cetera, and then you got peripheral out in there. And I can attest to that. When I fly with a 120 degree lens, it feels more natural than, you know, a, uh, a different lens which is, has a higher millimeter or, or a smaller field of view. But one thing that does ring true with the 50 millimeter lens or equivalent to a 50 millimeter lens is depth or perceived depth. Meaning if I was looking through a camera with a 50 millimeter lens at a tree, you can justify or guess that that tree is 10 feet away when it is actually 10 feet away. In FPV flying, that could be critical. So having the proper sense of how far away something is, is definitely gonna be critical and that's with the higher millimeter lenses. So I've set up three easy tests for me to be able to run through these lenses. I got 2.3 all the way up to 3.6. I'm gonna put each lens on on static tests uh, and we're gonna roll through them and you can see it for yourself and make your decision. We're gonna come back and have a conclusion. I have the 1177 camera hooked up to a tripod at the right height, just as though you were flying FPV through a line of trees. I've got it hooked up to my DVR, which is capable of screen capture. I'm going to roll through the different lenses so you can see what the field of view effect is, as well as the, uh, the depth perception is of each lens. Let's get started. For this next test, I pointed the camera directly at a tree. I'm gonna measure it back 10 feet, and I'm gonna roll through the different lenses. And what this test is gonna do is show you the different field of view versus the perceived depth or distance away an object is. As we go higher in the millimeters, it gets closer to the human eye, not necessarily in the width that we're seeing, but the perceived depth as what we're seeing. Wide uh, focal view is great for uh, shooting gates and seeing things to the side, but it also makes objects look further away than they actually are perceived on the screen itself. Let's go ahead and roll through the test. This last test, we're simulating FPV racing. I've got a small air gate right here, the camera mounted low and about two and a half feet away from it. As we roll through the different millimeters of lenses and the field of view changes, we're gonna be able to see how this gate is gonna be moving away from us as well as coming in and out of view. Just in the background, I've got a tripod setup, which is gonna uh, basically simulate a turning flag. So we're gonna be able to see how that affects it as well.
Well, that DVR definitely sucks at taking screen cap images. It looked a lot better on a monitor. Hopefully you were still able to make it out. Based on that test though, I can tell you I'm switching from a 3.6 millimeter lens down to 2.8 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. I got fixed on 3.6 millimeters because that was the stock go-to lens on a lot of FPV cameras back in the day and you flew what you could get your hands on. And I was stubborn and I never changed. 2.8 seems to be the go-to lens a lot of people are flying on for general FPV flying. So we'll see how it goes. I'm giving up a little bit in that perceived depth, but you get a lot in that increased field of view. So it should be pretty. Uh, I'm more of a freestyle guy than a gate chaser, but uh, of course I love FPV racing. So if it messes that up, I was never competitive or good at it anyway. We'll, we'll see how it goes. On the uh, exciting note, in doing all this, I was able to find a very rare lens that was only made in a few sizes. It's called a low distortion lens. It's actually designed for a little bit larger sensor. So uh, dropping this down and, and due to the, the, uh, the crop factor, it's actually equal to about a three millimeter lens. It's a little bit larger physically than a 2.1 millimeter lens, um, as well as it's fairly expensive. But if it corrects and makes a, a distortion free picture, it may totally be worth it. I'll report back and definitely let you guys know. By no means am I an expert on this. Hopefully this information helped you out. If I got something wrong, please leave it in the comments below. And uh, hopefully everyone can respond and, and pick up from that. Please like and subscribe. I'm Chris. We'll see you guys next time for 100% Epic.